friends, and welcome back to Paint Bravely, a podcast where you can find a little bit of encouragement, discover new ways to make your hobby more fun, and most importantly, learn to paint bravely. All right, we got we got some hobby stuff to start off with, and then maybe a main topic, which is, I guess, out of the norm for us at this point. Who's to say? We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I don't actually know. Yeah, we never um, know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we, we come up with main topics pretty often. And then just never get to them. And that's that's kind of how we roll. Yeah, things just kind of come up halfway through, you know, and we, we get yeah, distracted yeah. and yeah, that's the way of things. But we're glad you're here with us for <laughs> the 111th birthday of Paint Bravely, the podcast. And I like half of you, <laughs> half as well as you deserve. And I'm leaving now. Goodbye. <laughs> Classic Bilbo. You get that Bilbo joke? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The old uh, one, I, one, one. <laughs> uh, I'm having a party. <laughs> I, I love how he says that. The hundred eleventh birthday, like it's like it's like the slurred out a hundred and eleventh. Yeah, it's good. Uh, butter spread over too much bread. This paint brave of the podcast is. I feel like that every day. Mm-hmm. Every day, and I still got more models to paint. Um, but we're going to get into what you've been painting the last couple of weeks and you got some, uh, yeah, I got, I got an update. I got an important update. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we got an apology. We need to issue an official paint brave for the <laughs> podcast <official>. apology. <laughs> so I've been painting these action figures and I mentioned them a couple episodes ago that it started priming them or whatever. And mm-hmm. I just, I kept calling them over and over again. Joy Toy Warhammer action figures, Joy Toy Space Marines, Joy Toy figurines. And as it turns out, um, at no point were these Joy Toy uh, related (laughs) at all. Joy Toy is apparently a different company from McFarlane, which is what these are. Mm -hmm. These, um, yeah, these were sent to me by one of their company representatives who had an email address that was something something at mcfarlandtoys.com and boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they sent me a, a box of samples and, and the box return address said mcfarland on it every single you know product box with an action figure inside said mcfarland toys warhammer on it mm-hmm. so <laughs> at no point was there any reason for me to call these <laughs> joy toys <laughs> and <laughs> and, and in fact, I've I've never held a Joy Toy miniature, but I have now held McFarlane Space Marines. They're mm-hmm. eight inches tall. They're they're action figures. They're big, beefy action figures, mm-hmm. and they're okay. They're okay. I, anyway, I painted them up. They're a little bit sticky. Partially, that's because <laughs> the primer had a weird interaction with some of the plastic on here. There's some hard plastic. There's some soft plastic. The soft plastic did not like the dregs at the bottom of my, of my old Rust-Oleum cans, uh, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, you know, it was an interesting experience. I, I kept them all mobile. You and I had talked about the option of gluing the joints in place, yeah, yeah. converting the action figures into statues. I chose not to do that. And so um, I am having some problems where... You know, all the joints are moving around, things are rubbing against other things, and I'm scraping some of the paint off of the model. So the yeah. durability of using miniature paint on action figures <laughs> is not great. I didn't expect it to be great. But anyway, I've painted my first action figures. They look fine. They, it was not an amazing experience because of the, the sticky primer and because of... You know, just the natural wear and tear that an action figure goes through, but mm-hmm. live and learn, live and learn. Yeah. Well, I think a good solution, right, to not gluing them together and to not get the paint to, you know, rub off any more than it already has, which to be honest, it, it looks like battle damage on the armor. So I think you're fine there. Yeah. Um, Is to put them back in the box. I threw the boxes out. Why did you do that? Look, I know you if you, all the boxes. If you have Always. if you have an action figure from 1974 that's still in the box, that's worth money. If you have an action <laughs> figure from 2024 still in the box, 
I mean, I'm not going to disparage anybody here, but that's never going to be worth any money. <laughs> I No, except that it's a, a custom model painted by Goobertown Brent, okay. and it's in the box. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, as a, as a tool for displaying your model that is now painted, to put everything back in the plastic, like, you know, vacuum-formed mm -hmm. sections and put it in the box and hang it up. Okay, I can I can see that. Yeah. They they don't look amazing in their vacuum formed packaging. It's like two different <laughs> layers of plastic. There's the the clear window just on the front surface of the box. Yeah, yeah. And then inside the box they're kind of in a little like clamshell of clear plastic oh, okay. on the outside. So there's two layers of plastic that you're looking through. Mm, interesting. And by that point, eh, you, you're not seeing a lot of, of the actual model in there. So Yeah. Well, the, the Joy Toys that I have. Oh, you have? Okay, okay. Look, look really good in a box. I have them hanging up on the wall. They're pinned to the wall right now. Nice. Well, like the McFarlands, displayed. which are what I have, uh, <laughs> eh, look okay. They look fine. The, the box... Yeah. The box is not the ideal way to display these. I, I don't know what the ideal way is, but it, but it ain't that box. Hmm. I feel like there's a way you could do that. But you threw the boxes away, so we'll never know. And that is too bad. We'll never know. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I've been doing some painting stuff. Oh, tell us. Yeah. Since you're... you're Playing with your cat. No, I am <laughs> trying to get my cat to eat a little bit slower because I know what <laughs> yeah. happens when he eats too fast. Look, I think it's been well established that uh, cat activities on this podcast are more than okay, and you should stop pestering them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, after a hundred and eleventeenth uh, episodes of. Yeah. Of paint brave the podcast. I'm not sure if we've actually had one hacking up a hairball yet. <laughs> no, not yet. I think we've gotten lucky. But you know what? If that was, if that happened, it would it would be, you know, cut out, clipped, put up as a short, just on repeat. That it would do so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't like it when Gordon eats too fast because I have to clean it up. So <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, cats. What yeah. have you been painting, Casey? You, you're stalling. <laughs> you're stalling. I mean, I'm not trying to stall. I'm having a cat conversation. I, I've been painting. I uh, actually haven't gotten to painting yet this week. Um, I pulled out my old Eldar army from, like, good old 1998. Because I think when I got them. Okay. Um, but third edition Eldar, some second edition stuff. Almost all metal. Um, Stuff that I got when I was a kid, I actually bought on eBay back in the day mm. um that i yeah a couple of auctions where I, I spent way too much money that you know wasn't actually mine it's like my dad's account and i'm like no auction i must fight and win and it's like you know a hundred dollars plus for some of these and I'm like okay that was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> you know um but i have them and i still have them so i feel i feel somewhat justified in that department but i got them out and i've been um like, I didn't want to strip any of the old models because I don't want to, like, get rid of my original paint jobs, right? I want to have them yep. Um, yep. just as a good reminder. And and honestly, when I look at my old paint jobs from then, it takes me back immediately. You know, I could see somebody else's painted model, and it's like, okay, cool, yeah, that's an Eldar model, but it's one of mine. It's in my cabinet. It's like, yeah, I remember that guy. You oh, know, yeah. That specific guy that I painted weird and did a thing to, and he's done some things, you know? Um, so I like that feeling. I think it's a good idea for, for everybody to kind of keep their original models, but, uh, I got everything out and I had a, a Ziploc bag that had a bunch of models from eBay. So some of them in there were ones that I had painted and put in for some reason or another 20 years ago. Um, and then a bunch of them were, were like sort of primed and kind of painted from someone else a long time ago, but I had a bottle of, of green paint in the the bag for some reason and uh over the last 20 plus years like the paint finally ended up spilling out and covering the majority of the models and like caking it and they've all, of course all the paint's dry now so is it yeah, craft it paint no, no no it was citadel paint like in one of the bolter uh whatever bottles 
You know what I'm talking about? So Dark Angels green, Goblin green. What are we talking about? Well, see, I don't know Snot because the bottle green. wasn't in there. Okay. And I don't remember the name. It might have been Dark Angels green. Okay. Um, Because I remember buying some of that. It was, mm-hmm. in fact, you know what? Whatever. It might have been Bale Tan green. Ooh, Except I think that's okay. a shade. Now, I don't remember. It was something that I was using to paint Bale Tan Eldar models at the time. So that kind of like... Maybe not quite Dark Angels, but somewhere in the middle, right? All right. Um, so that's mostly what, I'm, what I've been working on. So I haven't even gotten to painting. I painted some sweet bases. I did that. And I'm going for like a real bright blue and like orange rust kind of color. A real nice bright combination because you put Eldar models on the table. And one of my favorite things about them is that you can pretty much paint them all different colors. Like each little unit has its own color scheme. So you can really explore painting all the colors with one army instead of kind of everything looking the same. Yep. Yeah. So I got them in, or they were fire dragons. I have, uh, I don't know, eight or nine of them. Um, And I got most of them into a pickle jar of acetone. And they've been sitting and... The paint's been coming off. I just got to scrub them down, and, and that's kind of what I've been working on. I've been really going going a little slow this week in terms of painting, but, but we're getting there. Hey, as long as you got models sitting in the pickle jar, you're getting stuff done. You're multitasking right now, <laughs> yeah. Casey, right now. Exactly, yeah. Those models are getting work done, and I'm not even having to touch them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always got those irons in the fire. Always got those models in the pickle jar. Yeah. I do have a I do have like a Costco size pickle jar that's got Ellie's totally awesome in it and I've got like a, a bunch of metal orcs and Bretonians and some other few different things and they're just floating in the jar all scientific like you know very just nice looks cool. it's like a like a set piece just a gnarly <laughs> looking jar with a bunch of stuff in it <laughs> and I don't know if we talked about this before, but you can keep reusing that juice over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And the you know chunks of paint will settle down to the bottom. The colors of the liquid will change over time, but it's still got that power. Like I've, I have some very nasty old juice that uh, just keep reusing. It keeps keeps taking paint off minis. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, as long as it keeps working. Like, keep on using it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the acetone probably won't go bad for a while. No, um, that won't go bad. That's, right. That's not what it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the LA Totally Awesome does lose its potency pretty quickly. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I've had I've had it work for a long time. For a long time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But but the you know the bulk of the liquid in LA is totally awesome is water water whereas yeah. the bulk of the liquid in acetone is acetone, acetone so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah now well that's that's a cool project though like uh, we we all have a connection to whatever the first minis we worked on were and it's it's great that you have yours plus some extras that you can do some stuff mm-hmm. with so. Yeah, it's it's nice because they're like I, I used to play with them too. I like the the ones I got off of eBay were like sprayed with a couple of different colors out of a rattle can, and I'm like, this is this is good, this is fine. Um, so I played a bunch of games with them, and then I just never did anything with them. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I feel okay about stripping them, just because I didn't paint them for sure. Yeah, yeah, I I have some secondhand models from back in the day that were painted well enough like not great but like well enough mm-hmm. that i would feel bad stripping them <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, i i run into those like weirdly more often than you'd think um i end up because obviously i'm looking for like not the best paint job on a model right i want to do something with that and sometimes i get them in the mail and i'm like i can't use this it's too like good. I would, just, I would just feel too bad. Yeah, like for real. Yeah. I've got a few models that are in my cabinet that I can't I can't tell people I painted and they're good enough that that's like, well, somebody else painted this. I don't know. 
I'm not going to do anything with it, though. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the thing. You you work on a system where you need to have a good before and after picture, and mm -hmm. uh, there are times when people start start trying to get to you. They say that I liked it better before. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, it's funny. I get that every single time. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, no joke. It could be the worst thing in the world. It's like, uh, yes, I, I gave this to my five-year-old four or five years ago, and I'm going to strip it and paint it and be like, oh, man, the color combination, the, the theory behind it is so much better. Like, why'd you ruin it? Like, no. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> but it never fails. Yeah, you, you got to toughen up, Casey. You <laughs> You know that you painted it slightly better than it was before. Slightly, yes. And I am worried about that sometimes. <laughs> like if it's too good going in, like I, I have to do a better job or else this isn't going to make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see the need to have a, a really janky looking paint job for doing what you do. One, yeah, yeah. it's it's a guilt-free experience dunking mm -hmm. it in that jar. And two, I mean, hey, you need that before and after photo. Yeah, yeah, and as long as it's better in the after, then I, I feel like I'm I'm free and clear at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a lot of those like cleaning videos on YouTube. There's mm -hmm. there's a guy who cleans like cars. There's a guy who cleans rugs. There's, yeah. <laughs> or, or like there's just like a, a gun or something that somehow mm -hmm. has three inches of rust all around it. And yeah. a lot of those videos are definitely fake like yeah yeah like the rug one especially like i'm mm, i am yeah. convinced that they just <laughs> bought a rug at home depot and soaked it in mud for an hour before they started filming the video like, yeah <laughs> they put some soap on it you can't see the rug they wash the soap yeah. off it's look how dirty this was keep doing like it yeah until you, all of a sudden you, it's clean yeah you, you, yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, there are videos where people do talk about that. Like here, here is how these things are faked. Mm -hmm. um, like I've seen people dunk like an old gun in basically um, dirty down rust and sure. pull it out. And it's like, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty bad and actually rusty. Yeah. And then but you can clean, clean it that off. right off. Can't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've had people definitely accuse me of that before. Like that all I'm doing, it's all fake, which it seems insane to me, and I, I get where yeah, you're not. They're you're not from, trying to restore it to shiny pewter, though. You're trying to right. put paint onto it. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> even if I faked the first half, I still had to do all the work and then actually paint it. Right. But I, but I don't, because that would be weird. Like, it would be weird. Yeah. Or maybe I just feel weird about that. That I feel like that'd be a stupid way to do it. <laughs> It would be. It would be. I mean, you could, you could, uh, you know, get some stuff off eBay, kind of half clean them up, throw them in your drawer, forget about them for a few years, come back, take the picture of the like nasty thing that's been in your drawer. <laughs> I th yeah, I think that's still technically within the rules. I think you know you don't have to I mean, feel too I, bad about that. There, there is like a limit of time where a project that I've started then becomes the same kind of project. I mean, I, I just did that a couple of weeks ago, right? I bought a bunch of Skaven Giselles off of eBay five years ago, and I I didn't strip them because I wasn't doing that when I started the channel. Mm -hmm. um, but I half painted them, and I got them, like, prepped, right? Yep. And then I pulled them out again, and, like, they've been in a drawer. I've gone through a move. Um, two moves. Yeah. And they're all beaten up and like, you can see metal through the paint. I mean, I explained all this in the video, you know, but it's definitely something that's like, well, this was technically, I already started this. I've already painted these kind of, but I stripped them down and started over. And of course at the time I wasn't cleaning models almost at all. All the mold lines are still on. There was still metal flashing that was just mm. folded over onto the model that was primed in. <laughs> Yep. So like I, I still went back and I was like, yeah, no, I got I gotta actually fix this. And now they're they're looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. 
how many mold lines you can still see even after multiple people have had multiple sessions with a model <laughs> yes yes exactly there's always somewhere there's Very always one sneaky <clears throat> yeah yeah no i and i always feel like i miss one mm-hmm. no matter what mm-hmm. like i will spend a, a good amount of time cleaning and on camera too i'm like recording the process and there's just one glaring oh. one somewhere you know yeah um i've definitely had a few where i've i've primed and started painting a model and it's like on the face of the model like a what was it the some kind of lizard man model the the star priest i think uh-huh and, and there's just a stupid mold line like right down the front of his face Ooh. yeah and i just missed it completely the rest of the model looks great and then i got that so i had to like cut it through the primer and then like brush primer yeah. over it and it, like it was fine but you know it happens yeah they're they're vexing those those mold lines will get you <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well i'm wishing you the best of luck with your eldar and jars yeah should be should be good and yeah I'm you excited. can paint them whatever colors you want and i I was I was always more of a dark Eldar middle schooler myself, but uh, I, yeah. I painted my squads in different colors. Well, you you kind of I think we may have talked about this before, like three or four years ago. But you had the choice of your army, right? Like you didn't really have uh, like any limits necessarily. Nobody was like saying no, you can't pick that. I I I was actually kind of guided into it. I had less choice than you okay. might think. There was already a, a group of people playing, and there was very much an attitude of like, "Oh no, get one of the ones that people haven't picked yet." Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, and and also that was at the time when there were, you know, some extra models floating around. It was a natural choice, and you know mm-hmm. that you can paint you can paint sweet cabalite armor any color you want. So I did. It, nice. it was a fine choice it was a fine choice oh it's it was a fine choice for sure mm-hmm. i i think that was one of my early choices was dark eldar but then it turns out no nah, somebody in the group they they got that uh third edition box you yeah, know they yeah, got the yeah. dark eldar they're going hard in it and uh, i actually got all of their leftover bits i still have them like a little jar of them from that box that so i couldn't i couldn't pick dark eldar yeah uh, but then, like, Chaos Space Marines were taken. Yeah. Space Marines were taken. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I was like, I'm going orcs. And they're like, don't be an idiot. You're not picking orcs. No joke. Oh, you weren't allowed to pick orcs, huh? Apparently not. I don't know why, because that's all I'm about now. Probably because of that, too. They were like, you can't. No, that's all I want. <laughs> but, yeah, so I ended up going with the Eldar. Um, and, like, those... uh. The jet bikes in particular, I remember going into a hobby store because um, I'd asked my dad to like take me to hobby shops, right? And he was like big into trains and stuff. And he was kind of thinking maybe getting into remote control um, airplanes because he had some pilot friends that did that for mm-hmm. fun when they weren't flying actual planes. Um, and this one hobby shop that was mostly RC uh, and train stuff had a small display of Warhammer stuff, very small display, like maybe 10 boxes total. And one of them that I, it was there every time I went in was a box of the, whatever the spear. Yeah. Gets, you what, know? Three of them in a box. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, with the old kind of derpy helmets too, back in the day. Yeah. So, so like first or second edition, whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah. That definitely got me. That's that'll do it. That'll do it right there. I understand. All right. Well, we we look forward to seeing what comes out of them pickle jars. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Should be good. Should be clean. <laughs> All right. So, the we're we're recording this right before I head off to my my next little convention. So mm-hmm. we we're on the other side of Huzzah now, and that Huzzah. was a that was a good little one here in Portland, Maine. And I am off to Iron Weld, run by Wicked Dicey, and that's uh, on the north side of Boston coming up this weekend. And uh, tournaments for various games. There's some painting, 
Uh, I don't know exactly what to expect, but I'm I'm excited to head down there and check it out. Oh, getting nice. Heading away from the the local events to getting into the regional events, you know. And I mean, it, up in Boston, like yeah, yeah, that seems like it probably will be a, a decently sized event. Couple hundred people is my understanding, but I will okay. report back. We'll we'll have updates yeah, sure. next time. <laughs> um, and then, as of this recording, the two of us are each about one month out from a somewhat larger convention. Mm-hmm. So you're a special guest at SoonerCon this year. Yeah, yeah, SoonerCon, SoonerCon down in uh, Oklahoma. Um, which should be, should be fun. I'm, it's my first time teaching classes, so I'm pretty excited for that. You ready? I mean, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I've overprepared. You got your models? And and it's, uh, yes and no. They're, they're printing them out on their end. Okay, cool. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't have to, you know, suitcase over 50 models (laughs) and hope they don't break. (laughs) But you you picked the the designs or the sculpts or whatever. Yeah, actually, I picked. Um, so one page rules have been putting out a bunch of vampire models, mm-hmm. and there's uh, there's these like skeleton infantry, mm-hmm. and it's a mix of of um, you know metallic armor and leather, uh, and then these really like they got cool swords and they're like these kind of cartoony skeletons are a little bit bigger, like more heroic scale. Mm-hmm. Um, and I printed out a bunch of them. And they're really cool, so uh, that should be pretty fun to paint. And it, you've got a weathering class and a beginner's class, and yeah, a couple of beginners classes. Uh, weathering using enamels and pigments and normal paints and all sorts of cool stuff. And then uh, mm. um, they really wanted me to do like a kit bashing class, so we're getting a bunch of Reaper models like just a grab bag of Reaper models and then yep. a bunch of 3D printed bits. And we're just going to go nuts and make weird crap. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called, but that was one of the events at ReaperCon. That oh, right, yeah. They just kind of have a bucket of, so you know, the lower end Reaper minis and you're right. just <laughs> supposed to like cut them up and glue stuff together. And I don't know if it was called like Reaper Bash. Maybe it was Monster Bash. I don't know what they called it. <laughs> either but, way but yeah you know, you know the these conventions have some standard types of painting classes or you know speed painting or mm. uh, or or actual classes but one of the one of the events that was kind of on the tier of like a speed paint hour was a kit bashing hour at ReaperCon, and nice. it was that same thing of here's a bunch of reaper models eh, make something with them and the the folks who run SoonerCon also go to ReaperCon every year. I think those two yeah. places are physically only a couple hours drive apart. Oh, and okay. so and so I imagine that the drive for <laughs> hey Casey, yeah. can you do a kit bashing class with a bunch of Reaper mm-hmm. minis? I bet that's because those folks have participated in and enjoyed that at ReaperCon. That's my guess. That that does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um and I, and I could see why that would be a fun thing to do because it just is. Um, I I tend to use a lot of three D printed parts if I can't find something that's you know a different model in the same or similar range that I'm using. Um, obviously, three D printing is a pretty good way to go. So we're gonna do a pretty good mix of Reaper models and three D printing, and they're printing out. I mean, I'm assuming a lot, but um, I gave them. I don't know, three or four different packs that have a couple hundred bits in them each kind of thing. Nice. Um, so there's just going to be a ton of, a ton of options and variety. And the, the cool thing about it, um, is I, I want to focus on, you know, when you put the model together, it kind of looks weird, especially with different types of material. But when you prime the model, all of a sudden it actually becomes real. Yes. So we're yes. going to prime them in the class and then they'll put them like, in like a cup or something to take. <laughs> as like the last step is just like yes. come over here. Yeah, I, we're I gonna get them primed paint. up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna hopefully see that like outcome and um, because it you know it's it's hard to believe sometimes, right? Like you really gotta kit bash bravely and and just see what happens and. Dang, you know, that's a great point. It. That's a really good point because 
yeah, when you're just gluing bits together, that doesn't necessarily look <laughs> awesome. But once you get that layer of black primer on there, sometimes mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, even even people who know how to sculpt things, and you see the green stuff on the model, and you're like, I don't know, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And then it and then it's just like ridiculously nice looking model at the end of it. it's like okay well yeah you know how to sculpt models so i guess all right you got me <laughs> you know you got me yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every time of that green stuff throws me off yeah oh we are going to be working with milliput in that class too that's always fun perfect yeah that sounds good so i'm i'm starting to get ready for <laughs> what too many games in philadelphia old oh, too many games convention and they didn't want to put me in a little room to have me teach classes. They wanted to get me on a stage. <laughs> and so I have no idea how this is going to go. But yeah, you were born for the stage. I'm born for the stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today is my 111th birthday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to get up in front of those people. <laughs> just, just start with a Bilbo speech yeah. to kind of ease into it and get my nerves to settle down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start off with a joke. Really, really loosen things up, you know. <laughs> a real hard hitting Lord of the Rings joke somewhere, and, you know, a monologue maybe. Good monologue will do it. We're gonna have to. I'm I'm blanking on on what <laughs> monologues there might be in, in Lord of the Rings. You know, get the oh, you know like the the end, like the Aragorn one. It is not this day. Oh you yeah, know, yeah. No, we like could do that. that. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, maybe Theoden right before the yeah, yeah, right before, before they run in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. They're they're giving me a room and a stage, and I'm supposed to fill up two different hours. So one hour I'm doing get excited about mini painting. It's going to be my my TED talk on why mini painting is the best hobby ever. I've got I've got thoughts yeah. on that. I don't know if I could fill forty five <laughs> minutes, but we're gonna we're gonna try. I feel like I feel like we fill a forty five minute podcast pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could do it. You you can. Uh, get I can. There. I can do it. It's just a question of how bored people are gonna be because they gave me a time slot at dinner time <laughs> on Friday. So okay, we'll, well. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that's that's a harder time to get people excited about mini painting, and then mm -hmm. for the second time slot, they gave me Sunday afternoon, and it, in convention mm -hmm. settings. Sunday afternoon is things are starting to die down. People are packing yeah. up, going home. If they flew in, they're flying out. You know, so yeah. we'll see. But for the second time slot, I am doing uh, teaching noobs to paint minis, and so this is going to be. I'm going to have, I think, like four seats up on stage, like kind of the convention panel kind of seating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get four people up there, either other cast guests from the convention or uh, failing my ability to rope those people in, uh, just people from the crowd. And by crowd, I mean the, the four people who showed up to the Sunday <laughs> afternoon event. <laughs> and that were still at the convention. They're like, oh, I thought it was... Uh... I thought this was over Sunday night. I was going yep. on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the plan is to get some people up on stage and then... Um, probably do like contrast paint, speed paint, slap chop, basically, but just yeah, yeah. in 45 minutes, get people to pick some colors, put some colors down, show that you can get paint on a mini in a short amount of time, that, that making those choices about what the colors are going to be can be fun and engaging. And mm -hmm. hopefully there'll still be people in the crowd willing to to cheer for the noobs on stage giving it their yeah. all so <laughs> it's a it's a deep concept uh I'm, yeah fingers crossed live mini painting yeah a lot yeah and and i figure i can be you know, have a camera that's hooked up to the big screen and be walking back and forth between the four people and be like oh how's this person doing oh they haven't decided what color to paint this jacket yet what do you think crowd like red blue what are we what are we doing <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so this I one mean, it, it seems like the DNA for a real good like okay, mid, you know, mid-tier YouTube game show, you mm -hmm, know. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I feel like uh there's a blueprint here. You know, you could really do something fun with that. We'll see how it goes. Again, mm -hmm. I'm not not super excited about the time slots they gave me. I think sure, that's sure. uh Playing with a little bit of a, a handicap there, or, or 
<laughs> well, for crowd participation, or, or, a, or yeah. a higher challenge level, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Or you know. same thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 But hopefully there is a crowd to participate, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. But we'll mm-hmm. we'll report back in <laughs> in a month or so and <laughs> let you know. Yeah. I mean, a mini, uh, like a mini painting baking show style competition. Yeah. Yep. 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 I feel like, I feel like that's a thing Mm -hmm. that, that could be capitalized on. Yes. There's the only thing is that mini painting does take a little while. And so I I feel like those, those cooking shows have to be edited in such a way. They're like, Oh no, I only have five minutes left to, bake a cake and then somehow the cake is ready like i, I there's some well, yeah. <laughs> shenanigans are done with the time on those or, a bit, or it's a, a, bit. a cooking show where everything they make actually only needs five minutes in a skillet but, right right because yeah. it's like cooking food that people need to eat at a dinner at a restaurant it doesn't take that long anyways i yeah Fair. and i do see that Fair. um and yeah i think that might be the issue it, to have like people watching, but if you, I, I'm more thinking of an edited show for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, uh, um, have you seen, is it cake? No, no. See, I have small children. So, you know, um, yeah, it's a, a Netflix show. And I mean, there's lots of others like it, but it's, it's like a cooking show. People go on, they make cakes that look like real things. And then people have to try and like, they bring celebrities on to try and guess oh. what is cake and what is not cake. It's very compelling. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I've definitely seen the like Instagram reels of that yeah, idea yeah, yeah like oh what's this person doing it's, what, it's what are they doing with that thing like oh that thing is a cake I got it yes, okay exactly yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and, and the way they do it is is they, they have an idea behind whatever the you know the theme that they're all gonna go for yeah and then they kind of do whatever they want within that theme and they make a, a thing and I think you could probably do that. Give everybody the same um, kind of project brief. Mm-hmm. And then they all go and they do their thing. And then maybe they get like six, eight hours to do it. And then you bring it all together in the end. That and could you be get, fun. You get, you get famous people to judge. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah, the for mini painting, and maybe it takes about as long as it takes to make a cake. But to, to paint a mini, <laughs> realistically, it takes a couple hours to paint a mini. Like yeah, you, yeah. and so all of the like speed painting stuff on YouTube, like I've gotten less and less interested in it because at first I was curious, like, yeah, how long does it take me to paint a mini? What if I go really mm-hmm. hard? What if I try some different strategies? Mm-hmm. And basically I've kind of learned the answer is that for me, it takes me a couple hours to paint a mini. If I really try to go fast, it takes me one hour to paint a mini. Mm-hmm. And there are kind of ways to shave time off that, but like I've answered that question for myself. I know, I know that's the kind of the amount of time it takes to paint a mini if you know what you're doing and the idea of then getting somebody to watch that live for Could a live, tough, yeah. for a live show, an hour is a long time to watch somebody paint a mini. Oh, for sure. Like if yeah. you're if you're sitting in nasty convention seats and like <laughs> you're hearing stuff from the room next door and mm-hmm. the the projector isn't great, like an hour is a long time to watch somebody paint a mini. Yeah. Um, so and you're getting four people. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the idea, and I, I the idea is that I will give them probably speed paint, not like regular acrylic paints, because. Yeah. With speed paint, um, realistically, I mean, you can get the basic colors on there in 15 minutes, probably. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And a lot of the idea is just showing that it can be done, that it really is not that hard. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'll give them some thicker brown paint or something, and they could try to paint a belt on the mini or you know, <laughs> a, a bit of leather or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting question of how can you make showing people miniatures getting painted interesting when it's in real time. Yeah. Uh, I think that's challenging. But, like, the idea of I'll, I'll have four different minis for the different people to be working on. I'll be able to rotate through them, see how each person's doing. 
uh, answer the the you know kind of frequently asked questions that are coming up in real time. Mm -hmm. It might work. It might work. I mean, if there's enough people there, and uh, you've got a projector going, I think you you could probably get away with switching between people, and then coercing them into um, painting certain colors on certain things mm -hmm. via audience participation like yeah like you were saying red blue what you know really really push it <laughs> yep yep so that's that's what we're we, we got coming up here as the summer gets going yeah and it is getting going oh it's getting going oh uh, what else uh well i bought a new hand drill Feel okay. pretty good about that. Yeah, little uh, Amazon jobby for eight bucks. It'll it'll do. So you're talking like a pen sized drill for. Yeah, like you know, like a pinning things. Yeah, pin pin vice drill. Okay, okay. I was wondering if it was a yeah. battery operated one or not. Okay, it's it's finger no, operated. No. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. I feel like an electric one would would probably end poorly. Like I get, I get it for drilling through like feet or something or to pin, but mm -hmm. you know, like doing barrels and stuff, gun barrels, that's going to go through the side. Yeah. Like every, every time. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's probably one that's right in the Goldilocks zone of yeah powerful enough to be less annoying than using your fingers <laughs> to drive the thing, but slow enough and small enough and controlled enough to like be able to do a, a barrel. But I've got a, one of the smaller Dremels on my desk, and I never mm -hmm. use it because it's, it is. It's too fast. It's too heavy, too powerful. But there yeah. are, I know there are small, like, pen-sized electric mm -hmm. drills. And someday, someday, that's, that's someday, on my list yeah. of uh, cool little <laughs> upgrades to get for myself eventually. Like a, like a sweet paint vortex mixer. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the stuff right there. Definitely on that right same there. level, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Check out the Typhoon paint mixers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I need to get a new one. Mine uh mine died. Well yeah. is it because it was not not a typhoon? Correct, yeah. Yeah. It was not a typhoon. Yeah. I, I no, give shout outs for my typhoon every once in a while. It's uh some some guy who just reconditions old lab <laughs> equipment and it's lab equipment from the eighties and nineties and it's <laughs> Still good at shaking things up because it's built like a tank. He cleans it up, makes sure it works, gives it a fresh coat of paint, sells it at a very reasonable price. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hit that guy up and. That's give the me, spirit. Give me a typhoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the one I had it just it just stopped. Like it just did not work. I just went. It worked, and then I went for another bottle, and it just did not work anymore. Oof. Yeah. No good. I didn't smell anything either. It didn't like burn up i don't know what happened uh which is a bummer because i've actually missed it quite a bit um yeah and handshaking bottles come on well things are getting a little easier these days these days a lot of bottles have sh uh shakers shaker balls in them that's true mixing balls although i've i've been i was actually thinking about this today now that you mention it um i was i was shaking up a bottle of i think it was army painter speed paint and you know mixing balls doing their job right but then you know i i can tell that the ball is getting towards the tip yeah even though i'm i'm angling it not very far down and i'm like i'm trying very hard to make sure that doesn't happen but then i squeeze a little and then it stops <laughs> and i don't want to squeeze harder because i know what's going to happen <laughs> And I feel like those balls are just going to, they're going to get in the way at some point and I'm going to make a huge mess and I'm going to be upset. I've definitely done that. That yeah. is absolutely a thing with the newer speed paints is that they have mm -hmm. mixing balls in there and the speed paint is such a liquidy consistency that the balls very quickly, if you turn that bottle upside down to put a few drops onto your palate, the balls will immediately drop down and like block the the nozzle from the inside yeah so and, if you squeeze too hard and then the pops nozzle off. pops off <laughs> and you make a mess and yeah. i did that with peachy flesh just the first time i used oh. it with the with those new speed paints it's too bad because yeah. that's a, a nice color 
Yeah, and, actually, yeah. just use that color too. It's on a some good rat one. Tails. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So everything's a learning process. In that mm -hmm. case, you mm -hmm. got to hold them at like a forty-five degree angle so that you can squirt out your old bit of speed paint without blocking the nozzle with the the mixing ball. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, live and learn. You know, when I pour myself a glass of milk, I don't hold the gallon upside down to pour the glass of milk. You know, I I pour it at an angle because that's the way it works the best. So a learning, learning process for everything. <laughs> yeah. Then again, gallons of milk don't come with uh, mixing balls. No, they do not. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> and in retrospect, I'm not sure that the speed paint actually needed mixing balls, but hey. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I can kind of see why, like you, you, like learning from other paint ranges of this of similar types, right? Uh, contrast paint, like it it separates and then it settles and it doesn't leave the bottom of the, oh, the okay. bottle. Okay, so you maybe it is really necessary. have to shake. So I'm I'm wondering okay. if they're just like we're just gonna take care of this, and not mi having it be an issue, because like the mixing ball definitely mix all of that stuff together. Like I feel like the consistency is is more regular. Mm. Um, with the speed paints, whereas the contrast separates and I feel like maybe I'm not getting all of what's in there. So it's hard to say. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. What else we got going on here? I got a few, I got a few more things for all sure. Right. I got a few more things. Uh, I backed another Kickstarter just out of curiosity. Um, I backed a lot of Kickstarters lately. I think uh -oh. I'm up to like, like 28, kickstarters in total to, to don't look at me like that <laughs> in right. total throughout like the history of backing kickstarters okay okay That's it's, it's a stupid okay. number it's higher um but uh scale 75 is putting out scale color games so it's paint but scale 75 paints but with the like really bright colors but they're saying mm. that it's still you know smooth and matte but with vibrant colors, which would be nice because I like their paints, but their colors are very muted generally. Okay. So I'm, I'm just getting like a, one of their eight packs. It's 20 bucks, I think. So I feel like that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we both have more paints than we can ever use, but it is always good to stay abreast on what's going on and what's new out there and just be aware yeah yeah speaking of also a, a kickstarter and it might not have been on kickstarter it was chimera did they're doing some new paints too um but they used slap chop in their official marketing okay like written down there like you can get opaque you can get glazes you can do slap chop and it's like they have little examples of somebody painting it and it's like a picture and it says slap chop on there. I just thought that was so cool. That is pretty cool. Rob, <laughs> like it's Rob made has made it. Rob, <laughs> yeah. the honest war gamer, just helping to write ad copy for Chimera paints. Yeah. Outstanding. Like all Outstanding. the way to the top, <laughs> like really niche, like almost fine artist paints and, and you've got slap chop in there. <laughs> it's just so good. Wonderful. Square yeah. based indeed outstanding <laughs> yeah exactly um i also just got another kickstarter in the mail uh-huh uh i i bought into forbidden psalm which is uh it's like a tabletop rpg but they have war bands and i don't know it seemed really interesting art style is really cool um so i finally got all that stuff it's got like a play mat and i've got the war band book and the main book and a bunch of extras and stuff so uh, you know, probably never play it, but it looks really cool. And I just want more game books to have on the shelf just in case, you know, apocalypse or something. You, you might, might yeah. need something new. Yeah. It's, you better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and just cause we're on the topic, I'm just going to keep going. Um, snarling badger. Yes. So Uncle Adam and, and Vinzy V. Death putting Wizards. Putting out uh, Death Wizards, yeah, which looks pretty good, actually. Looks cool. And they've got, like, cards and tokens and stuff that you can get with it. And 
it's a little upgrade from stuff they've done before, I think. I don't remember their other games coming with extras. No. And I I still have my models collected for the first one they did, the <clears throat> demons. What was the one with demons? I can't remember. Rain in Hell. Rain in Hell. Yeah. yeah I've, I always have like 20 or 30 projects slash videos <laughs> partially made. And I have a Rain in Hell video that I started two years ago by like... <laughs> collecting demons from a whole bunch of different companies and so the idea is it's gonna show off a mini agnostic game with like seven different companies worth of minis in my demon band and mm-hmm. and i forgot to finish that so <laughs> and then we got space station zero which uh-huh. i read the first couple of pages of the rule book and like oh that's kind of a neat premise i like that and i started yeah, painting that some seems good yeah. started painting some klingons for my space station <laughs> zero and now I feel like I'm behind again. They just got that that treadmill of content coming out of Snarlin' Badger Studios. I, I mean, can't, I can't keep you'd up. Think so, but it's been like five years in, be- like not in between, but it's in total. Like, like, like total there's been three time. years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's been time in between, <laughs> like more than enough for a normal person. <laughs> I understand. Um, yeah, no judgment. I'm literally in the same boat. But <laughs> it's look, I've been busy painting my McFarlane action figures and calling them joy toy and yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> whoops whatever <laughs> it's fine it's fine they didn't hear about it joy toy is welcome to send me some <laughs> stuff too and maybe i'll try not to make those sticky with the primer I don't, we'll, we'll see yeah we'll see yeah. Yeah. Oh. i mean i don't i don't know if there's like soft rubbery stuff on the joy toys i'm not sure i have to look no well. I don't want to get up. No, no, I, it it don't matter. Well, if we need to know, we'll find out. <laughs> exactly. But we were talking about Death Wizard. I'm sorry, we got distracted. Death Wizard. I know that's, uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, Death Wizard looks cool. Uh, uh, definitely a wizard game. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not. I don't know. I don't know much about it. Honestly, it just looks cool. Um, and it's, I think it's, it's a always, necromancer it's nice. game. Not. not yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's actually a. Wi- I mean, necromancers are kind of wizards, but they're the death wizards. D e t h death wizards. Yeah, death like the band. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Which makes a lot of sense too. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, but I've I've got that in uh, in my cart on the the war games whatever website that it's being sold through, so gonna pick that up here pretty soon my man yeah yeah looking for it uh, like i said more books more games i just want options for the end of the world someday gaming at the end of the world that'll be that'll be a whole other channel just explore games well at that point we won't be making content maybe we will <laughs> maybe we will <laughs> look the... at our fallout underground bunkers You've, yeah. you've seen the the new <laughs> season of Kids in the Hall, right? No. Okay. Kids in the Hall, which is a sketch comedy troupe in the 90s, came back and did one season. Maybe there's going to be another season. I don't know. But it was on Amazon Prime. Kids in the Hall sketch comedy did a season. And one of the sketches was a doomsday bunker radio host. So there, <laughs> okay. so it was some guy sitting in a basement, like af- at the end of the world and the apocalypse, and like the generators just barely still going, and the lights are flickering. And he's, hey, coming to you now from uh, K ninety seven, The Rock. Uh, he's only got yeah. like one song that still works on his player. He just keeps <laughs> replaying it. And yeah. uh, if if you haven't seen this, go go check it out. It's a very sad man just trying to keep his wits together by pretending <laughs> he's putting out content after the after the end of the world. It's good. It it follows very closely with whatever you were saying about making podcasts about your yeah, tabletop yeah. gaming at the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a good way to spend your time. Uh, like that, that Simpsons episode where the world disappears and they're like in the void with I think Steve Jackson and they're just like who wants to play D&D and they're like alright <laughs> I didn't watch that season hmm that was that was old it was an old one hmm. hmm. alright if you say so I do I do okay okay 
Well, uh, I've got I've got here on my list that I've been working on my canoe seat. I, uh, you know, summer's coming. Mm. I decided to raise my <laughs> canoe seat time. up a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. My 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 one person canoe is kind of halfway between a kayak and a canoe. The seat is a little mm-hmm. too low in there, so I've been playing around with my Allen wrenches. Going to raise that up about three inches. Makes it less stable. Makes it a little more comfy for the legs, so we'll we'll see how see that, that goes. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I I've I've noticed that you do sit pretty low in that canoe. You look mm-hmm. a little uncomfortable. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I think kayaks had like a a real burst in popularity maybe twenty years ago or so, mm-hmm. thirty years ago. But <laughs> yeah, I I'm I'm gonna stand by this. Canoes are better than kayaks. They just are. I mean, yeah, superior. Like the 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 kayak fishing has definitely become a thing, where you've got all sorts of things off the side of your your kayak that. And yet, canoe the, the fishing is better in every and, way. Yeah, right. well, it is much older. It certainly, has worked for a lot longer. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh... yeah. I'm I'm thinking like Native American canoeing. Yeah, I'm thinking like Inuit uh, kayaking, and we are both probably kind of wrong about this. But <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, let's <laughs> probably just stop while we're ahead on this issue. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, but mm. anyway, so that's been going on. Um, try to get outside a little bit more. Try to, you know, mm-hmm. expand my. Mm-hmm. My hobbies go for some runs, but I keep falling down on my runs. So that's not good. I've been... <laughs> You've been out of the game too long. You're just yeah. running down the road and you just yeah. fall. Yeah, normally I figure that if it's been a while since I run, I just huff and puff a lot and have to walk for a bit. But I've been like sure. tripping, tripping over roots and just <laughs> face planting, which has not been great. <laughs> you forgot the layout of the trails near you. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's that one route. Somebody yeah. should have spray painted red real quick. And, you know. <laughs> my foot just healed up, and then yesterday I face planted again, and like my, oh my knees God. all swollen up now. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm just giving you the full update here. How are you doing, Casey? I mean, I'm in a similar boat. So I, I did mention a few episodes ago boat. that, like, I was, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I should have said canoe. Damn. It. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I like I I joined a, a local like pickleball group, right? Uh-huh. So I've been I've been playing in, playing pretty often, like uh, going on my own to just do drills a couple times a week, and then playing games for three or four hours one day out of the week. Um, and I don't know what I did because I I felt great up until last night, and uh, my foot just I I did something to it, and it's all swollen. And I've been in a boot all day. In a boot. In a boot. Yeah. It's no good. Same boot that I uh, I got when I jumped out of my party van that I used to have that I used to show on the channel. Mm-hmm. And I, I sprained my ankle. I thought I broke it. And I had to go get x-rays. Ooh. And then they, they gave me this boot. And I've just kept it and just in case. And, and it, today was the day I pulled out the boot. All right. So the That's nice thing about mini painting is <laughs> exactly. your entire body doesn't need to work. Use hands and eyes and that, you know, get yourself a nice chair and that'll pretty much take care of things. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've been able to do that. Although hobbling around my hobby space has not been great. Yeah. That's like a good I, point. I, I you got to get a I wheelie a chair. In here. That's right. I, I have, I have, I have a one, two, three, I've got four. Four wheelie chairs in my room right now. My goodness. Does that give me an extra point in my hobby score? I feel like it might. I'm telling you, <laughs> we have to have a, a max out at 10 because if you yeah, start no, no, it's, it's definitely if going above 10. 10, you just show it off and nobody's going to want to listen to it. So, <laughs> Four wheelie chairs, that's just showing off at this that's point. That's just showing off. <laughs> well, one's like a, a nice gamer chair for my, my computer, right? Mm-hmm. It's where I sit and do all my, my work. And then I've got like my old chair. It's just a crappy office chair, but it still rolls good. Still rolls. And then good. I have I have a a chair that was in my grandpa's pharmacy. It's just a stool that like swivels to go up and down, but it's on like old nineteen fifty something rubber wheels that are just rock hard at this point and wheel great. Nice. Yeah, and then and then I got another 
kind of stool that on wheels in the other corner. Hmm. So I don't know. I just I, I got a lot of I got a lot of chairs in this room. All right, I've why. got I've got four chairs myself, two wheelie chairs okay. for me, two chairs for cats. Because if you're if you're painting oh, with cats, yeah. you gotta have a spot for the cats to sit so they can be nearby and not mm-hmm. totally in the way at all times. This one is on a stool. Snuffles is on a stool. Gordon is in his chair next to my <laughs> painting desk on the other side of the room. But, that makes that makes a lot more sense. Uh-huh. I don't necessarily have an excuse for my amount of chairs. Like, uh, you know, if uh, animals come into my space, it's usually not a good thing, and and they're climbing on the walls. Yeah, we've we've had this discussion. Exactly, I know, and it's that time of year, so I'm just waiting for it to happen. It's a lizard season. Oh, and we got some aggressive ones these days. Iguana June, they call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll name her if I catch her. <laughs> <laughs> we got these like spotted lizards. And they're quick and they're angry. They're so angry. Are they angry or are they just like hungry? Uh, uh, it's, it's real hard to tell. I, I had one. I caught one. I put it in a, an aquarium for, I had it for a long time. I kept it. It was a long time ago. Um, and it was big. <laughs> I, it was a big one and it was angry because I fed it. I fed it pretty often. Big, you know, crickets, live crickets and stuff. Mm. And and he seemed happy enough until he got near and then he'd try and bite you. Well, this is, this is a lot to think about, Casey. Oh. Yeah. Had had to let him go. It's too dangerous. Yeah, too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, do you got you got anything else? You got anything else? I mean, I want to talk about the the Star Wars hotel, but I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> we don't have four hours. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, of of the content that we watched in the past week, both of us watched the Jenny Nicholson four hour <laughs> Star Wars hotel takedown review. This yeah. is. Yeah. This is essentially a, a customer review of a Disney theme park attraction that has been defunct for most of the past year. Mm-hmm. And uh, old Jenny Nicholson thoroughly explained the factors that may have led to it uh, not being a successful venture from Disney. Yes. Yeah. But and, in a very good way. Yeah. Like... It, a, a benchmark YouTube video, like a oh for sure, yeah. like you will remember where you were when you watched the <laughs> Jenny Nicholson <laughs> Star Wars Hotel takedown. It was the eleventy first episode of Pain Bravely. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think we have any tips on that one, but that's actually I got four hours of painting done while I listened to that. Yeah, and I was doing yeah, you know, I was painting work. my McFarland figures while I was, <laughs> I was listening to that. <laughs> yeah, I was I was doing base toppers and uh, prepping metal models. So I mean, yeah, it's, it went by quick too. Yeah, yeah. so a little, little view and recommendation for us on that one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It probably won't be linked in no. the description. No, no you, you find it. You find it. Anyways, thank you again for joining us on another episode of Paint Bravely. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and sharing this message with your hobby friends. And as always, we appreciate each and every one of you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Talk to you next time. Ooh, getting the burning again. That was good. Feisty. <laughs>